Facing a December deadline, the federal government has reintroduced legislation to amend the law on medically assisted death. A Quebec court ruled a year ago that the existing law is unconstitutional because it restricts a medically assisted death only to those whose natural death is reasonably foreseeable. So change is coming and it has to happen quickly. David Lametti is Canada's Minister of Justice and he joins me now from Parliament Hill. Uh, Minister Lametti, good to see you again. Thanks for taking time to speak with me. Good evening. This bill takes a two-track approach, so let me break it down. First, it proposes to loosen the eligibility rules for those Canadians who uh, are near death and want a medically assisted death. How will that process be easier? Well, look, first of all, let me underscore that that's the vast majority of cases, and that's the, also the, the, the vast majority of cases where people have had some experience with MAID, and that's overwhelmingly positive. What we've done is we have eliminated the 10-day uh, reflection period after a person has made the decision, has gone through all the, the evaluations and, and, uh, and uh, gotten the, uh, the various expert opinions, uh, there was a 10-day waiting period. All we heard through the course of our consultations across Canada was that waiting period prolonged suffering for people. Uh, and, and we heard that from both families and we heard that from, from uh, MAID providers. So we've taken that out. We've also um, moved the number of, witness, the number of uh, witnesses uh, signing off mm -hmm. from, from two to one. And we have allowed that witness to be a, a health care provider. What happens often, particularly in long-term care or in, in, health, in certain kinds of medical facilities, there isn't any family left. And so people don't know anybody other than the people who are caring for them. And right. so sometimes the people who are caring for them are the best placed to ensure that, that everything has been done uh, with, with full and free consent. Okay, um, and now on the other track, you're also adding tougher rules for those who aren't near death. Tell me about that. Well, look, we heard from, we heard from the disability community in particular that uh, they, they didn't want, uh, that, that, they, that they felt uh, that the reasonable, uh, the criterion of reasonably foreseeable natural death was something that uh, for them uh, went to their dignity and, and went to the equality and value of every human life. Um, what they didn't want to happen was, let's say in the case of a traumatic injury, uh, that a person made a decision uh, to have made quickly without knowing fully uh, what kinds of alternatives uh, would be available for living a life with dignity. And so we've ensured that with a, with a, a longer evaluation period, this is, this is not, um, the same thing as the reflection period. Mm. This is the, the period when a person's actually being assessed and, 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 and uh, during that period, uh, we'll make sure that that person, according to the law, that that person has access uh, to knowing what kinds of supports are available. Um, and we actually require those discussions to happen before the decision is made. It shouldn't unduly lengthen the process, which would, always, would already have been rigorous, uh, but we're just making sure that again, decisions are made fully with full autonomy. Uh, once again, it's, it's, it's this twin balance between autonomy okay. uh, and dignity. What happens with requests for medically assisted death where a mental illness is the sole underlying medical condition? There's been a lot of conversation, discussion about that in this country. The existing law bans that. Uh, is that still the case in the new bill? That is still the case. It's the same bill that we presented earlier in the year. Uh, once again, we heard across uh, Canada in our consultations and with experts, as well as from the, uh, as well as from the expert committee, uh, the Canadian Council of Academies that, that wrote a report on it, mm. there still isn't a consensus there. We still need to do more work. And that would be one of the subjects identified for the full parliamentary review that will take place at some point after uh, this bill is passed. Okay, uh, you've already asked the Quebec court for two extensions. We've had a prorogation that delayed the process uh, even further, and now uh, you have just two months to get these changes through Parliament. Uh, how can you have a, a fulsome debate in Parliament and develop a consensus in that short period of time? Well, look, first of all, there was a great consensus amongst, uh, amongst Canadians, and, and I hope that inspires parliamentarians of all stripes. Uh, to work together to get this done. The second uh, point is that we already introduced this bill in the House of Commons, uh, so there has been some discussion, uh, some review of it already, certainly some back and forth uh, between members across the aisle, uh, as well as uh, some senators who are beginning to look at it. So hopefully we have a head start, uh, but at the end of the day, I, I'm relying on my fellow parliamentarians uh, to really uh, get this bill through quickly 
uh, because it does represent, I think, a pretty strong consensus of where Canadians actually are at. You've already heard from many experts, uh, I think, in the consultation process that suggested that uh, e even these changes in the bill may, may be still too restrictive. Are you, are you open to any amendments? Well, we're always open to amendment. Uh, we respect the parliamentary process, and, and if, if we haven't gotten something right, we'll be willing to look at it. Uh, that being said, I also remind my fellow parliamentarians, and indeed all Canadians, that uh, there is a parliamentary review scheduled according to the law that we passed in 2016. That's supposed to look at uh, very difficult questions like mental illness as the sole underlying condition uh, like uh, advanced, uh, advanced directives or advanced requests, uh, as well as the case of uh, mature minors. So all of those really more difficult and profound issues are things that the parliamentary review is, is uh, meant to look at. Right, the, the, the approach being taken that, uh, I think you talked about that a number of times, that uh, this is to be viewed as a first step in an ongoing process, that uh, these measures and legislation like this is, uh, likely to face a, a, a lot of uh, changes in, in the years to come, right? That's correct. We're evolving with Canadian society. I mean, I think what we found in our, in our consultations was that Canadians were ready for the measures that we proposed. We've also added Audrey Parker's amendment to the current package of legislation. Again, Canadians were ready for that. Uh, there are many Canadians who are ready for advance requests. Uh, there are still some who have fears about that, and the same thing with mental illness. We'll have to look at that more carefully, uh, but we will look at that uh, in due course. All right. Uh, Canada's Justice Minister, David Lamenti, good to talk to you. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you very much, Peter.